uh, I recognize them. Okay, this is the Rafiki update on all that is happening in Rafiki, and we're going to do a few big picture items first, and then I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour as if you have been on a Rafiki home office trip. And uh, yeah, and so you'll have jet lag at the end, all right, then you'll go home and go to sleep. First thing I want to talk to you about is that we have updated the Rafiki logo. Uh, and I wanted to explain kind of what we did and why. And you will begin to see this flow through every document. So pray for Karen Gobert and her team. <laughs> so we have, as you recognize, there's the world and the children. That has remained the same. What's missing? Africa. Africa. It's not that we have uh, taken our eyes off of Africa at all. It's that, however, God is leading us to minister in America. And as I mentioned earlier, the Rafiki Bible study is going around the world. As I said, it went to Israel. It went, it's gone to Paris. It's gone to Singapore. Uh, and so what, we need to have it happen in Eustace. Oh, it is in Eustace. Uh, they're doing a Philippian study. So, so there's the world. At the book at the bottom is the Bible, God's Word. What are we? God's Word at work, right? We want to help people know God. And so that's it. And then there's the cross. We wanted to put that in there because we are a Christian ministry. We follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We wanted to make that abundantly clear. The next thing I wanted to mention to you uh, is, is I wanted to tell you a little bit about this Rafiki uh, day student because the thing that runs our Rafiki villages is child sponsorship. And I wanted to make sure that everybody has seen the new format that we have is this new to anybody? Has everybody seen this format? Yes. It's just lovely. And our team has worked really hard to see that this, uh, that this, is, uh, this, this is much more efficient. Um, come on. Let me just tell you about this, though. This little girl is just represents, represents the impact that child sponsorship is having on individual children. This little girl's story represents the impact for day students at our Rafiki schools. So this little girl, her uh, uh, alias is Julia. And she this is Ethiopia. She lives in Mojo with her little brother and mother, who is a widow. The, a few months before the little girl, Julia, came to Rafiki, her father, who was a very respected elder in our church partner, was brutally murdered. He was brutally murdered because the people, his next door neighbor hired people to kill him. Uh, the neighbor followed witchcraft and also the Ethiopian Orthodox traditions and, and believed that this little girl's father was responsible for their misfortunes. Friends, witchcraft, you all know this, witchcraft and cursing is still alive today uh, in Africa and in other places. So the mama, her mother, was left with two young children under the age of six. She has a very tiny salary. And so this little girl, Julia, now goes to our Rafiki school in Ethiopia. Uh, also, uh, her little brother got in uh, through the lottery. You guys had a lottery, right, Amy? Yeah, 600 pit kids, right? 600 children for 30, for, for 30 openings, right? Yeah. So... But see, if it wasn't for child sponsorship, children like this could not come to our schools. I would encourage you to encourage others to think about sponsoring children. We've made it very easy through our website now. And, uh, and, and, this, and this is what enables us to uh, bring new children in. And uh, she says in the Rafiki Bible study in, in Leviticus, yes, our children study Leviticus, yes. <laughs> Uh, I have learned that God loves his people and wants to be with them. This is what she wrote in her own handwriting. Don't you love that? One thing I'm grateful to God for is the, what? Peace he gives me. And don't you love the flower? It's so cute. I sponsor her. Okay, she's one of my children. Oh, yes. And I think somebody else sponsors her. We have multiple sponsors for some children. All right, so I just wanted to, to show you that. Um, okay. All right, so Rafiki Foundation, we have two goals, but our main mission is we want to help people know God. 
And I love John 17, 3. And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. sent. John 17, 3. Our main mission, and it's always been this way, is to help people know God. How do we do that in Rafiki, however? Well, we have the the, the longest reformed Bible study in the world, right, Rosemary? That's what they wrote. 500 and what, 50 week-long lessons? 57 week-long lessons. So we do it through Bible study. We have, and we have three versions of the Rafiki Bible study. You all know that? Rafiki Bible study for small groups, which is what we sell here in the States. We have the Sunday school materials, right? And we also have the Rafiki Bible study for schools and homeschool. So those of you here in the audience who have families you know who homeschool or you know of Christian schools that would like to just buy our Bible study, we will sell that as a standalone resource for schools. We also teach every subject from a biblical worldview. But this is our main mission in Rafiki. But we also help people raise their standard of living. How do we do that? We do that through schools, classical Christian schools in Africa and the USA from pre-K to grade 12. We also do it through teacher training. You know, teacher training helps to raise the standard of living for the young men and women who go through that teacher training, who then in turn teach children better, whose standard of living also gets improved. You see that? See that chain reaction going on? It's really exciting when you think about it. Now, one of the things we need to know is that the RICE program now sort of has three versions. Got a lot of threes going on. Three versions of the Bible study, three versions of the RICE program. There's the, the main three-year program that leads to certificates and diplomas that we have. But we've also devo developed something called postgraduate studies, which is like a one-year work-study program where we bring in certified teachers, and they come and they spend a year at the village, and they work in the morning, and they get paid, and then in the afternoon, they learn. This has produced a lot of good teachers. Uh, Tanzania hired 14 of them. You're right over there, Laurie. There you are, 14 of them out of this program, and they ended up being really good teachers. And then for schools that buy our curriculum in Africa, we have a short-term orientation called CORE, which is Classical Orientation to Rafiki Education. We love acronyms. So it's called CORE. And this is over a one-year time period. They get four week-long trainings and follow-up from us. And this has proven to be very helpful. David Peterson in Kenya is pioneering this. And uh, we, are, we are excited about how this will work. So we help people raise their standard of living through our schools. You know, a school, education, we all know this, right? Education is the best way. If you want poverty alleviation, do education. If you want to stop child trafficking, let's talk about education, classical Christian education. Get children into schools, get them cared for. Uh, this really is a, is a wonderful remedy. Also, a classical Christian school is a wonderful discipleship environment, right? The children spend eight hours a day, hopefully, they, and they study the Word of God in the morning, and they're seeing everything from a biblical worldview, and hopefully people are practicing virtue, and if they're not, we deal with it, right? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, we sure do. So it, hel it helps people raise their standard of living. An extra year of education in the life of a person improves their earning power by 10% for every year they get. We also have been raising orphans. And by the way, we're still raising orphans. Erica, roughly in general, how many do we have left? In between a hundred, you know, within a hundred. Roughly 600 children we still have left to raise. Right. And that, where do we raise them through? All the way through college, if they qualify for university, vocational school, uh, technical schools, apprenticeships. We want them to be able to live independently. Lastly, we help people raise their standard of living. So we help them know God through Bible study, and we help them raise their standard of living through the Widows Program. And I want to encourage you to do some shopping tomorrow. You'll have time for that. Our vision. So that's our mission, helping people know God, help them raise their standard of living. That's our mission. What's our vision? We want to see a multitude of godly contributors. 
Now, you tell me, what does the word godly bring to your mind? What is that kind of person like who's godly? Just give me a few words. Uh, integrity. Integrity, kind. The of what? Reflects the character of God, characteristics of God. What else? Has grace. grace. Wise. Wise. Generous. Generous. Good. What? Praying, Praying person. Holy, right? Loves others. Loves others. Great. So we hope this is what we're asking God for. A multitude of godly contributors, Rafiki children, Rafiki students, and every partner school that adopts this curriculum and Bible study. A multitude of godly contributors. And a contributor, what's a contributor? How would you define that person? Right. What else? To be a contributor, you need, need resources of your own. We're educating these young men and women. And we're passing on an education system uh, uh, that, God willing, will equip African young men and women to think, right? To be able to lead, to be able to contribute. Are you already seeing that some from the children in your villages? Yeah, be ready to share those stories tomorrow because we know it's already happening. But I, again, do what I do. I imagine these young people at the age of 40 and 50. I look out at them and I say, I'm seeing an audience like you, where you are already, you, you, you all are contributing in so many ways, or, and you have. So this is what we hope to see, is a multitude of godly contributors in Africa and beyond. I just wanted to look back a little bit. Uh, we started taking in orphans in 2001. So by 2002, we had roughly 25 children. They were all in one village. And what village was that? Thank you. You guys know your history very well. <laughs> By 2010, we were at 1,143. By 2014, we grew to 1,326. By 2018, we are at 2,258. These are orphans and day students. And then by the end of last year, we were at 3,355. So we're really excited to see the growth. And we will top out most likely, in our Rafiki villages at about 5,000 total children across 10 countries. We think 500 is a good number for each school. To get much bigger, you really lose the quality. So this is what we are thinking on that. In 2022, I like to go over kind of what God did for us last year, but I want us to remember that the Bible says, I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. We've been learning about that. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Some of the missionaries in this room have been out for two years. Remember, there were people who were there before you, people who built that village. Uh, and then, you know, don't forget, we had a founder who went to every one of those sites and, a, and an architect who went to every one of those sites and laid it out. And then there was work before that, and it's called the church in Africa. We couldn't do what we are getting to do and build on, it, on that if, we, if the church in Africa wasn't already there. Because guess where we got a lot of our land? Right, from the church in Africa. So don't forget, you know, so we all get our part but it's God who gives the growth. So last year, we added over 350 children to our schools in Africa, provided scholarships to 152 orphans. 104 of them are getting college degrees. All right, luck out, Africa. <laughs> the Liberia Rice Program was accredited. Our pre-K through 12 curriculum was approved in Kenya, and the curriculum in early childhood was approved in Uganda. Huge milestones. We started working on all of that, those two things in 2013. It took nine years, right? Yeah, I remember that, right? Okay, we, last year uh, we, printed some, we printed inventory of our Rafiki classical Christian curriculum and Bible study to send out to Africa. And we printed and shipped enough to equip 482 more classrooms. So we're ready when a church partner says, we want to pilot this in 10 schools now. 
or when a private school says, we want to switch over. Didn't you have that happen, David? This woman who switched from IG, SCE, or they came and she picked up the curriculum from you, something like that? Yeah, that's happening. They hear about us, and they're ready, and they want to get it. So we want to make sure you have inventory out there, at least from early childhood to grade two, and Bible study, so you can sell and supply it to them. Um, and, and that's enough, enough to impact at least 8,000 children. It's amazing. Within a short period of time, God may allow us to double, triple, quadruple our impact in the communities around us. But also, in the U.S. and beyond, we sold the Rafiki Bible Study to 212 groups last year. For a total of two, over 2,000 sets of the Rafiki Bible Study have gone out, and that's primarily to groups in America. How many of you, aside from the missionaries, have been a part of a Rafiki Bible Study group at least once? Got, got at least a dozen or so hands up there, right. Uh, if you aren't part of one, Get the study and start one in your neighborhood. James is eight weeks long. It's a great way to start. Ephesians, I think Ephesians is probably, well, it may be 16. Anyway, uh, you know, you can take this and pray and start it in your neighborhood. It's a great way to get the word of God out. Uh, we've added new widow's products. Be looking for Bolga Tonga baskets coming from Ghana. And I think soap from Tanzania. Is that right, KG? Yes. All right, we shipped 19,335 study Bibles and children's Bibles to Africa last year. Our shipping and printing capacity doubled in one year to 15 million pages. Is that right, Steve? Or am I making that up? That sounds like a lot. No, I think it was 15 million pages. Uh, over last year, we, we had a backlog of Rice graduates, so about 80 of them graduated within the last year and a half. And last year, by God's grace, we incorporated and have gotten everything pretty much ready <clears throat> to start the Rafiki Classical Academy here in Eustis, Florida, a cla the only classical Christian school. Right, Kelly Four? Thank you. All right. Very good. You know, y'all need to pray with us on that, on this. Pray with us on this. We uh, are asking God to enable us to open in August of this year right here in Eustis. Uh, ask God for students and teachers, right, Kelly? All right, be praying for that. I'm just going to quickly show this to you. If you want to know about these two-year goals in the next couple of years, what are we asking God for so you can pray for these? I'll just highlight a few of them. The main thing we need to do, see the real red thing there? No, oh, look at that. Re ask the Lord for 20 long-term missionaries at least. This is what we are really asking God for. We need that next generation of Rafikis coming up. We are working with colleges and universities and seminaries to help allow them the opportunity to go short term and get experience on the mission field with Rafiki. So we're working up some means for that to happen. Uh, we're looking at uh, artists and musicians uh, to help them to get out. So we're working up some ways. But you know what the Bible says? What did Jesus say? He said, pray. Pray for the, pray for the harvesters. And we're, we really do see the need for 20 or more long-term missionaries. So be praying for that. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that we are probably uh, going to consider building a rice building in Rwanda. That's our next country. So you can be praying for the resources to do that. We think there's a real need and opportunity there. The last couple of things I'll mention to you is we're asking God for 15,000 churches in Africa and 1,000 churches in America using the Rafiki Bible Study Sunday School materials. Wouldn't that be incredible? Wouldn't that be incredible? If you've had a chance, if you haven't had a chance, be sure and explore the Sunday School materials. Perhaps that's something your church would like to have. And lastly, we would like to see 5,000 groups RBS groups in America within the next two years, and five churches in the USA starting schools with our curriculum. So let's ask the Lord for these things. All right. Now, around the world with Rafiki, we're going to do a quick home office trip probably in the next 20 minutes, and I'm just going to give you a few highlights. I'm going to start with the February trip. We did six countries in three weeks. 
our first stop with Ken was Kenya. And uh, here was a picture of us, uh, those of us on the trip, uh, some friends of Rafiki and uh, partners of Rafiki. Uh, we visited with our church partners. We have five church partners in Kenya, and they are active partners, eager for the Sunday school materials. Uh, we have the uh, Lutherans in particular, looking at 900 sets of our Sunday school materials for their 900 churches. It was, a, it was an amazing trip. We got to see 13 of our 14 church partners. And you all know how challenging that can be to arrange that. So my hat's off to our missionaries who worked very hard to make those meetings happen. One of the exciting things that happened on this trip is we uh, connected with a new school that has two campuses, uh, two primary school campuses of 1,000 children each. And they want our curriculum. They have the school curriculum, Bible study. And we also delivered, I think, Bibles for every child who could, for a lot of children who could read, right? Yes. And that was a school that was turned around when they went to the five-day training. The, one of the women who's a leader in the school, the first two days she was very skeptical, but by the third day, her mind changed. And she was like, we need to do this. There was a very exciting visit. Two, just like that, two schools, each with 1,000 children. Uh, great, great opportunity there. Um, one of the other things we always do on these trips now is we meet with our missionaries, but also our national administrative leadership. Uh, every missionary role uh, has at least one, if not two, national leaders at the village, uh, an assistant to the child care, head teachers for the school, an assistant to the rice dean, an assistant to the village administrator. And so we meet together, we have fellowship, we talk about vision and mission, and these men and women are really making the villages work, right? You all in the field there, we're so thankful for them. So we had a great meeting with them when we did this in every one of the countries. We also have, uh, we also made visits. Karen Gobert got to go see, I think, all the widows programs that we have in East Africa, most of them. So uh, this is uh, one of the women in our Kenya widows program, and also, and these are some of the women from the Rwanda program. Only thing I just want to tell you this is Mother's Day is just around the corner. Make two mothers happy. Buy something for your mom or your stepmom or your grandmom or your someone you know who's a mom and, uh, and make two mothers happy. You'll help a, an African mama happy. And so get something of meaning for the woman who has everything. All right. I've done my commercial. I don't, I'll tell you, you know, Karen Gobert, I have a lot of sympathy for you because this could be a five-hour presentation because I'd like to have pictures about everything we saw and did and every village and everybody, so you're all going to be left out. <laughs> but I just want to touch on a few things. Next stop on our trip was Uganda. One of the things that we loved was we went to church on Sunday and we got to see the Rafiki Sunday School materials being used by one of our church partners. We all spread out. Somebody was in preschool, somebody was in the teenage classes, some was in the adult classes, uh, somebody was in the primary school classes, so we got to sit in on that, and it was great. They followed the script, read the passage, read through the notes, asked the question, had an engaging discussion. It was very encouraging. Rosemary, that was uh, Emma Chiwanuka's church. He was doing a great job. Now, um, let's see. Not ready to talk about that yet. Uh, one of the things we always do on a trip is we visit morning assembly of our, every one of our schools has opening assembly with 300, 400 kids, saying a, a memory verse, maybe reciting the catechism, definitely singing the national anthem. Every country has a national anthem, don't they? Some are a little peppier than others. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> I mean, Kenya, man, you guys need to pep it up a little bit. All right. So uh, this, was, this was Uganda's morning assembly. I'll tell you something, and it's not, in, it's not this picture, but the last day we were in Uganda, the head of the Government Curriculum Development Center, she came and spoke to our students. First of all, so this woman runs all of the curriculum for the whole country of Uganda. And so first of all, she visited our third grade Bible class. And all the children were reading 
out of the ESV adult level Bible. And she couldn't believe that third graders could read so well. You all know that. Yes, exactly. So it was really amazing. The second thing, though, is she, we asked her to speak and address the students. So she said, how many of you, so she told them what a privilege they were having at this school. And she was, gave them, talked to them really well about how, how important it was they did well in this school. And she said, you all will be future leaders. How many of you might want to be president of the country? Fifty hands shot up. <laughs> so morning assembly is a wonderful time. We love seeing that. But then the, the, the best part of the day is the Bible study. Every Rafiki village, every Rafiki school, first class of the day, right? Bible study. Just straight through a book of the Bible. You sing a hymn. You go through the catechism, the memory verse. You read the passage. The Bible is read out loud. The children read it, you re or the teacher reads it to them. Unbelievable. Last week, I was talking to a man who's very involved in the classical Christian movement here in America. And I was talking to him about our curriculum and what we do here. And I said, oh, and by the way, this is our distinctive. Every morning, our schools start with Bible study, not a survey of the Bible, not a summary of the Bible, not Bible stories, but God's Word. And, he's, and I said, it's the first class of the day. He says, wait a minute. You mean the best part of your day? When the teacher is the freshest, and their best teaching, and the students are the freshest? You, you, the, that's, the, that's, that's the first day. And he was, it wasn't like argument, arguing. He was just like, wow, the light was dawning. He said, how do you get your head of school to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, we own the schools. <laughs> I really did say those words. But really, I mean, I, I just go, I'm incredulous. Why isn't this the first class of every Christian school? Why? Why isn't it? Apparently, it's not. So please pray with us that, first of all, every African partner school will follow the model and that, by God's grace, we might see that happen here in America. Can you imagine? Because it does send a message your first fruits to the Lord. Bible study, first class of the day. Don't you love that? One of the other things we got to do on this trip was to meet with the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. Church of Uganda is what denomination, Kelly, for? And David, how many members do they have roughly? 12 to 13 Correct. And 12 to 13 million members in the Church of Uganda Anglican. The, we arrived there the day after the archbishop had written a letter to the archbishop of Canterbury about the Anglican church's decision uh, about blessing gay marriages. And he said that was just deceptive. He said if it looks like a message and it, if it looks like a marriage and walks like a marriage, then it must be a marriage. You're, you're not just blessing uh, a union. Anyway, he was basically saying we're, we no longer consider ourselves part of the Anglican communion. Um, and so at the very, that day after that letter was, was sent out, we had the privilege of, of meeting with him, and Chris Larson presented him sort of a token of the 4,000 Reformation study Bibles they're going to be sending out to their pastors in August. It will be leaving here on a container very soon. I will say... Uh, Rosemary saw to it that they got 2,000 of those several years ago, pre-COVID, if I recall. So the, the 6,000 Reformation Study Bibles have gone out to the Anglican Church of Uganda. But another thing that this denomination is going to be doing is they are planning to implement our early childhood curriculum uh, in 100 of their schools or more in the next couple of years. We'll be working on a pilot program. David and Michelle Graves have been working really hard, and Kelly had also worked very hard with them. And then Amber and Paul are going to be doing a lot. They'll all be doing a lot of training of teachers and heads of school to see that this will be implemented successfully. So they'll be using Rafiki's curriculum, Rafiki's Bible study, starting with early childhood. And when our curriculum is finally approved, they will implement it. We can ask God that they would implement it across 6,000 primary schools. The Anglican Church has authority over 6,000 primary schools. 
Now, there are a lot of hurdles to this, a lot of reasons why it couldn't work. But I always remember John Knox, who prayed, give me Scotland or I die. And we've just been listening about how when God's word goes out, when, if he's overseeing it, it can come to be. So well, let's ask him for that. Lots of good things going on there. Uganda Beautiful Widows products, Safari Friends, made by Sudanese refugees. Mother's Day is coming. <laughs> Next stop was Rwanda. Rwanda, like all of our Rafiki villages, has long waiting lists. What's the latest number, Vicki? Golly, man. All right. We need to pray that we need to pray that people will start their own classical Christian schools with our material because that's the answer. The answer is not for us to build 20 more buildings and have a big, big, big school. Rwanda, I'm long waiting list for the school. <laughs> Wanted you to see, we have some of the most classrooms in the world, and I love what our teachers and our missionaries do to make them lively, beautiful, integrated classrooms. Classical Christian education in action. Uh, while we were in Rwanda, we, I, lis I listened in on some great theological discussions. First of all, we have cottage devotions in Rafiki villages, right? Morning and evening devotions. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, what we, a pattern has been established for our Rafiki children, hasn't it? They have seen this. There are 15 years at a Rafiki village where you have morning prayers, evening prayers. They will carry that into their homes. So while we were visiting one of the cottage devotions, uh, this wasn't the devotion, but this was one of the young men in the cottage I visited. They had two interesting discussions, one on Christology and the other on trichotomy or dichotomy. <laughs> Look it up. I had to. I had to. No, I'm kidding. So, so this is some of the wonderful things that happens in the Rafiki villages, as well as science labs. Thank you, Chris Moyer, for those designs. Every Rafiki village has a science lab now, I do believe. Is that right? Yes. And do you realize that in African schools, a science lab is very rare? Most children will go through school and science never seeing a microscope or a beaker or a Bunsen burner, never learn how to titrate. They just read about it. Our children get the great privilege here. Thank you to our donors who are very faithful to give to ensure that. On to Tanzania. I hope I didn't miss anything with Rwanda. Let me just check my notes. Whoops. My computer's died. Whoops. What is that? Ooh, hold on a second. I do have notes. And I... Okay. We're good. All right. We're good. We're good. We're moving along at a good pace. Tanzania. Beautiful village, sits at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. I put this in here because we have beautiful libraries. That too. Our villages have five, 7,000 books, I think, on average, or maybe. And this is also is rare in Africa. Many schools don't have libraries. Beautiful classrooms. This is a kindergarten classroom. They were doing cursive. How many of you learned with cursive? Yeah. How many of you didn't get cursive? Oh, well, aren't you blessed? All right. <laughs> Cursive is, uh, is uh, really good for your brain, by the way. So we teach cursive. Tanzania Widows Program. Uh, they, make, they make aprons, right? Quilts. And they are going to be making soap. Is that right? Yeah, these are great pictures, KG. Beautiful, beautiful. Women in the program are able to build houses and put their children in school. It just changes their life. Um, one of the neat things, this is the... Uh, so the Rice students, these are the Rice students in Tanzania. They're all in the postgraduate studies program. We had a really exciting thing happen in Tanzania. We met with the assistant bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Tanzania. And when he heard about the postgraduate studies program, and he heard about the Bible study, and he heard about well, how well their English was, had developed, he was like, what have we missed out on? <laughs> Why haven't we been sending people to you all? Well, we, we explained it was COVID and all this. And so he said, we want to hire these students. We want to double the size of the program. And we want to have that Bible study and those students teaching in all 20 of our schools in the northern diocese. 
huge breakthrough for us with the Lutherans in Tanzania. We were just absolutely delighted. Bishop Sho and the assistant bishop. And of course, Rosemary, we did see Bishop Kweka and Mama, and they send their greetings, and they fed us very well. The other thing that was really neat is this is uh, Dr. Tim Dernlin. Tim is with the Association of Classical and Christian Schools. He's the vice president over a network of over 500 classical and Christian schools. They, he, they paid his way on the trip. He went out, saw three countries. He came back. He wrote everybody, and he said, I would put my four children in any one of these Rafiki schools. Yeah, yeah, it was really encouraging. This is part of what we are asking God for, to connect us with more and more people in the United States who will want to send missionaries and help be a part of this work. Malawi, on to Malawi. We had a great time in Malawi. You know, Malawi is our biggest village, 75 acres, right? Lots to mow, right, Anna? <laughs> and, uh, and Debbie is here, and Larry and Cindy were also, and Mike and Vicki, you guys were in Malawi, and Jane was in Malawi. I'm going to miss somebody, I'm sure. I put this slide in here because you can see the wonderful, this is breakfast. Every Rafiki village serves two meals a day, to all the children in our schools. That comes to over 1.7 meals every year served. 1.7 meals, that's incredible. Uh, and so Malawi's a picture of eager students as well. One of the things that happened while we were on the trip is our Rafiki Girls Choir, right here, and that's Anna Liebing, uh, sang at a recitation, and our church partner was there the general secretary for the CCAP. After he heard them sing, he said, they need to sing tomorrow at our graduation. And they did. And the president of the country was there. It was a huge university graduation, 827 students. Every, the Ministry of Education with it was there. The president of the country was there. Uh, leaders from the government uh, and, I mean, it was huge, and they did a great job. Anna, where are you? There you are. Yeah, beautiful job. They really did. They represented us well, and it was broadcast on TV. Pretty cool. Sorry. We, and, by the way, we are working on accreditation of our rice program there uh, for a diploma, uh, and we're working on accreditation of rice in Uganda for a degree and a diploma, uh, and so we're making headway in that program. The next stop was Zambia. Uh, we had, uh, I have this picture here because it just shows you all the kids from the outside walking in. Every day at a Rafiki village, you'll see this long line of day students coming in. Um, also, this is the rice program here in Zambia. That's Tom Shoquist, our board member, greeting them. Uh, Tom Maggio is their dean. We also, with our church partner here, are working on accrediting this program uh, all the way through for a degree program. Zambia, widow's program, and these women are training others to also make the beautiful things they make. Great cosmetic bags. Now I'm going to go back in time a little bit. In October, we went to Ethiopia and West Africa. Uh, these are some of the beautiful faces you get to see there, and there's opening assembly. We built two new schools in Ethiopia in the last couple of years. Not easy to do. We also visited with our church partner. Our church partner is Makani Yesus. Makani Yesus has 10 million members. This is their president, Jonas, who was just reelected. What I love about this church is that the country's been at war, right? Let's call it what it is. For the last two years? And there's still upheaval and turmoil. But when we met with this church partner, and we were, I'm thinking they have, they'll have no interest in doing anything else for the next five years. But what do they want to do? They want to get people trained at our school, get teachers trained. They're eager to get the postgraduate studies program started. They're forward-looking. Pray for the Ethiopian church. Uh, they have just been besieged. Our team was safe. They did well. The school remained open, but it was a very hard time. But pray for our church partner in Ethiopia. They are planting churches. They are commissioning dioceses in spite of this. And so uh, we, love, we love our church partners very much. 
This is uh, Nigeria. Uh, we went to Niger we went Ethiopia, Nigeria, I think uh, Liberia, Ghana. Uh, one of the things that happens at every Rafiki village when we visit is a recitation. And uh, recitation develops their rhetoric skills. And so this was a wonderful thing about the different tribes of Nigeria to help uh, children not be tribalistic, I think. Wasn't that right? Yeah. Didn't somebody on our staff write that? One of our teachers? Second grade teacher wrote the actual script and did the uh, dramatization of it, and the children did a fantastic job. Uh, we have, uh, this is the building where the rice program is. We have a partner school. We have, I think we have at least five schools, right, Susie, who are using our curriculum in uh, Nigeria. And this is a Reformation Wall School where we delivered a curriculum. On to Liberia. I told you this was going to be quick. This is the Liberia Rice Program, and this is a school that is using our curriculum as well. So you can see it's spreading in all the countries. Kenya, Uganda, we have school in Malawi using our curriculum. We have schools in Zambia using our curriculum. Schools in Nigeria, schools in Liberia using our classical Christian curriculum. Are they doing it perfectly? No. But are they ex executing on it as well as they can? You betcha. Are they using the Bible study? Absolutely. And to give these children Bibles is an absolute life-changing opportunity. So we offer associate's degrees. This program was, was accredited last year uh, for, the, for the students who graduate. So they graduate ready to teach. I can't do a slideshow without talking about Rafiki Mamas. This was a great picture. I really liked it. And that just highlights, we still have Rafiki Mamas, don't we? and Rafiki parents, and they're the backbone of our Rafiki work. Many of them have been with our villages for 15 years, raising the Rafiki children under their care, raising future leaders for Africa. These are uh, some of our graduates, right, Julie McKeegan? Yeah, you recognize these kids? Man, they really dressed up nice. I don't think I've ever seen them look like that. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. That's great. They graduate this year? Congratulations. First group, right? Well, wow, it's exciting, isn't it? Future leaders going on, or future members for some of them. I think they're a pretty good group. Then we went on to Ghana, and we met with our church partners again. And you all remember 4,000 Sunday school sets of Romans. And it's being used in some of the churches even now as we speak, plus a commentary by Kent Hughes. No, yes, by Kent Hughes on Romans. That's through the Methodist Church in Ghana. I put this picture in because I thought it was kind of cool. We've got, this is Priscilla, right? Priscilla, second grade teacher. She was trained in the rice program many years ago that when it was going in Ghana. She's a great second grade teacher. Then this is Kojo, one of our Rafiki orphans who grew up at the village, and he was doing a pretty good lesson here in the second grade class. He's working for us at the village now. Uh, and what is Kojo doing for us now? Okay, good. So uh, it's just a delight to have some of our Rafiki children come to work for us. All right, a few quick stories, and then I'll wrap up, because you, you guys are holding up okay? Okay, just give me like three minutes, and then I'll be done. I want to get these stories straight, because they're good stories. All right. So while observing primary, so does a cow give birth to a chick, was the question. This is Rwanda. Uh, while, ob while observing first grade science, the students were studying reproduction of living things. Teacher Antoinette asked her class, does a cow give birth to a chick? Every hand in the room shot up, and this little girl answered, no, a cow gives birth to a calf, and a chicken gives birth to a chick. And a horse gives birth to a colt. Good job. Holding her hand, her, holding her palms up, she concluded, we know every species gives birth to its own kind. We learned that in Genesis. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. You go, girl. You go, girl. She knows what gender she is. Absolutely. I just want to show you this as a uh, science, another science class. These, uh, 
advanced, uh, this is an advanced science class in Rwanda exploring the organs of a fish. So that's good. That's not good to look at before dinner, though. Let's go on. <laughs> this is Zambia, and this is a, another day student story. I really want you to picture how life-changing our Rafiki schools are for children from the community. So this is one of our day students who is currently in grade one. She, oh, sorry, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She joined our school last year in kindergarten. Her mother had died, and a relative who lives near the Rafiki school took her in. So this little girl, she's now in first grade, and she started in kindergarten. So the story goes on. So she begins her day with Bible study. They are currently in Leviticus. Everybody's in Leviticus or what, numbers, right? She's in Leviticus right now, and every week she learns a hymn. This week it was Jesus, thy blood and righteousness. She learned a memory verse and a catechism question. Now in grade one, she has developed very good English speaking and reading skills. She's learning cursive, and she's also learning her local language. She gets to eat breakfast and lunch at our school, and school goes from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. She takes art, music, and P.E. with her 19 classmates. She says her favorite thing at Rafiki School is math. At her previous government school, which is about five miles away from us, this is Zambia, this little one would not have attended kindergarten, so she would have missed out on those foundational that foundational year for reading. It isn't offered there. And in, and in grade one, she would be in a class of, guess how many students? 60 to 70 students, whose day goes from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., three, three hours of school, because they go in shifts. This is not unusual, folks. It's not unusual. Her school day would have been just three hours long. She would have been a class of 70 students. She would not have been introduced to English until grade five. She's a very happy child with many friends, and her guardian is very pleased with her progress and all she is learning. This young man is a similar story from Zambia, and so uh, I'm going to tell you this too. It's just incredible. So this is a 10th grade student, and he's now in grade 11. Uh, his parents are in Lusaka, and he moved in with his sister and brother-in-law near our school just so he could come to our school. He also gets all of that Bible study and everything with his 17 classmates. He's also getting English and math, biology, science, religious education, and civic education from the Zambian syllabus. He's been learning theology, literature, history, art, and rhetoric. At his uh, previous government school, his day went from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., you see, this is happening all over. Just a few hours a day, you can't really educate them well. At his school there, only the teachers had textbooks, and students had to copy the notes that the teachers wrote on the board. Imagine if that's how you had to do school. He likes the environment at the Rafiki School. He said, I felt welcome the first day I arrived. He says, I, learn, I love how we learn more than the Zambian subjects. He's, and, and so uh, and it's, a, oh, I, it's a great story, but I, I'm not going to read it. We don't have time. Um, but I, if you want to know it, you can ask me later. Ask Rose Allender the story. All right, another great piece of news was our Kenyan Choir. Kenyan Choir, uh, they had the National Music Festival. Our, our uh, grades 4 to 8 participated in the National Music Festival. Our choir drove about 8 to 10 hours to get there. And the good news is the boys' choir won first place. Mixed choir, third place. And boys' and girls' solo, fourth place. Good job, Kenya. That's great. This is Ghana. These uh, grade 11 students uh, qualified for a neat opportunity to attend a two-week-long workshop at one of the universities. They got to study leadership, entrepreneurship, creative arts, and robotics. Great things happening there in Ghana. This story out of Malawi is, ex is just so touching. Anna, we got this out of your newsletter. So the father of a day student lost his job because he broke his leg, and his daughter could no longer attend the Rafiki school because they couldn't pay the fees. So he came 
one day to the school just basically to just urge us to take her back in. And this is what he said. Madam, we want her to be here so much. He said, I tried to put her into a public school, and it is so bad. I cannot stand it. My daughter is different than all the other children because of this place, Rafiki. In that other school, they teach her how to memorize, but you have taught her to be wise. She knows her subjects better. She also knows the Bible. He said, I love Jesus, but all I could ever tell her was to just read her Bible. I couldn't explain it to her. And now she comes home and it, she explains it to us. And she tells us how everything in school is connected to the Bible. Madam, you are transforming these children and it will not stop there. Now they will transform our church and our whole community. She did get into the school. Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. You she better because I'm going to be swarmed. All right. One or two last stories. Can you all take it? You hanging in a little bit longer? Just a little bit longer. This is great. Uh, the Alex, this is um, Alex and Deo. Uh, Alex came to Rafiki after his parents died of AIDS. These are two Rafiki orphans, two children. This is Uganda. So he came uh, after his parents died of AIDS. He came at the age of five because his uncle was caring for eight other orphans. Deo also came to Rafiki after, from the same area after both of his parents died of AIDS. His father died just before he was born and his mother soon after. His grandmother was very poor. She could not continue to care for him, so he came to the Rafiki village. Now, both of these young men are entering the second year of their advanced level education, grade 13, uh, meaning there are bright young men and most likely are going on to university for a bachelor's degree. Deo is a skilled guitar player, and he hopes to be an entrepreneur someday. Alex has a great interest in business and can't decide between being an economist or a lawyer. So they both have grown up with uh, uh, classical education, but they also share an interest in gardening. So in their final year, they wanted to figure out ways to support themselves in university. They learned that passion fruit is a profitable crop. They researched methods of cultivation. Passion fruit grows on vines, and they scavenged branches from trimmed trees, used them to support a network of supports made from strings of worn-out soccer goal nets. <laughs> Seeds came from passion fruit that was used in the dining hall, mulch from grass clippings after mowing, and the result was a carefully tended quarter of an acre of passion fruit that they're using that supplies the kitchen and shows how much they have applied their skills and thinking that they've learned from the Rafiki system. They look, that's, that's a good business. This is Gifty. Uh, she too was, has, been, has grown up at the Rafiki village in Ghana. Uh, for the last couple of years, she, uh, that we had to send some of our kids in Ghana off to local boarding schools. And the woman, the matron there, remarked at how remarkable this young girl was in her behavior. Uh, they, they said she was kind and helpful, unlike the rest of the students. She's now been accepted to the Bachelor of Nursing program at Wisconsin International University College, the university of our church partner, Bishop Finn. And so uh, she is, I think, fully sponsored all the way through university, isn't she? Yeah, thank God for our doctor friend, Rosemary, and sponsoring her. A future nurse, future contributor. Last two stories. John's father died when he was a year old. His mother died less than two years later. He came to Rafiki in 2004. So John goes all the way through Rafiki Village, Nigeria, goes through high school, goes off to university, right? And I think school goes on strike. University goes on strike. Not unusual in Nigeria. So he's out of school. So what does he do? He's like, I'm going to go get a job. So he gets a job in a school with computer. All of a sudden, they ask him to teach math. Then they say, can you teach English? <laughs> then can you teach science? Before you know it, they know he can teach all the subjects. <laughs> and they basically make him a head teacher. <laughs> Classical Christian education for you. Oh, this is a good one. All right. Sorry. 
I'm just, I've got just two more. I, I keep saying that. <laughs> this is this is this is Bupe. This is Bupe. This is it. This is uh, Zambia. She came from a local orphanage in 2007. Both of her parents are probably dead. Her grandfather visited once and never returned. Over the years, she's proved to be an excellent student. And she's always wanted to help those around her. And she wants to share God's word with others. So her dream has always been to be a physiotherapist and work in a mission hospital. She graduated in 2021 and is now in her second year pursuing a five-year degree in physiotherapy. I'd like her for my physical therapist. David is in Malawi, and David graduated from the Rafiki School and is now at Africa Bible College pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in audiology. His hope is that while he's there, he'll get enough Bible training and medical training so he can become a doctor and a pastor. He rec recently uh, visited the village and preached a sermon to all the staff and the kids about repentance and faith. Last is uh, Joy, and I'll just tell you about Joy. This is Nigeria. Joy grew up at the Rafiki Village, graduated university, uh, married, had a baby, so she did everything in the right order, and of course she knows the Lord. And uh, now she works for an NGO that does maternal health care. And uh, Joy is so responsible and competent that the woman who's in charge of it, when she goes out of town, she leaves Joy in charge. Isn't that right? And so uh, a godly contributor. And boy, I tell you, those Nigerians, they know how to dress up <laughs> for a graduation. They really do. So I just want you to be encouraged because it is really God's word at work and to God be the glory. All right. Thank you very much. All right. It's now time for dinner. Uh, enjoy your meal.